Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll do my Euro, uh, I believe, uh, Euro reaction, guys, to Group D and Group E games. So we're going to start with first with the Group E games since that was the early kickoff. So for me in this game, guys, uh, I thought Slovakia, for me, dominated that first half. They were the much better team the first half. Ukraine were hardly going and doing anything the first half. They weren't able to create a lot of good chances. Obviously, Harcel in there with a great uh, assist there to Shans, and Sean scored a fantastic header. The second half, though, I don't know what happened to Slovakia. It felt like they went defensive in the second half, and Ukraine all of a sudden upped it up a notch. And, you know, it was a great, great pass there from Zinchenko. Great, excellent counterattack there um, from Zinchenko to Shaparenko. And Shaparenko equalizes. And you're thinking, yourself, okay, Ukraine have a lifeline now. And then in the second half, man, they continue to pepper, uh, make a lot of good saves. And remember, Truman also had to make a lot of good saves in the first half. He made four saves in the first half. In the second half, man, Yarmichuk. Comes off the bench, 67th minute, scores a goal in the 80th minute. Great, great assist there for Shaparenko. You could maybe argue that uh, Dubrovka should have done better there um, at the near post. I like that kind of positioning. Um, and, yeah, for Ukraine, as I said, man, they put themselves in a great position to now potentially advance because now everyone, all the teams, except Belgium, we'll see how Belgium does tomorrow. If Belgium beats Romania, all the nations could be on three points, guys. And let me just show you guys the standings right here, guys. Because the standings look very interesting. So, looking at right here, not standings, sorry, table, table. Table right here, guys, the table. Romania is first with three points. Ukraine is second with three points. And then Bel Slovakia is third. And the Belgium is last. Obviously, Belgium still have a game to play. So, for Belgium, as I said, man, are they going to do their job? Time will only tell. And, guys, and I think if it goes down, if everyone has the same points, it goes down to goal difference. Goal difference decide who gets the second, the, the top three places. So, it's going to be very, very interesting in that regard. Let's move to the next one we got here is Poland 1, Austria 3. I thought Poland, for me, actually played really well the first half. Um, Austria, for me, though, they were a much better team. Toronto, they're going, scoring the goal there. Great, great uh, a goal there from the header. And then, obviously, Poland then equalized at Piazzek. And then it was pretty much a back-and-forth game in the first half. And then the second half, man, Poland just really fell apart. And Lewandowski came on. He wasn't off. Obviously, he came on the 16th minute because he wasn't really um, – he was still struggling with injury. Came on. And yeah, Lewandowski was pretty poor. I mean, this was his first game back. For, first game for Poland in the Euros and just hardly did anything. And then obviously the goal there. Great, great goal there for Bogmanter. Scored a fantastic solo individual piece of brilliance. And then let's talk about that penalty, guys. That, that penalty for me, I think, is really harsh. I think it's a bit harsh. Because... I was watching the re I, I was I was seeing it in real time and are not so obviously Chesney is the one that commits the foul and for me it's a very soft pen it's almost like the a penalty we saw with uh, Spain Croatia where Roger takes him down but if it's a bit of a soft tackle and you know now you could also probably blame QR for making that pass and that kind of bad positioning to Chesney Chesney having to react and to make that kind of uh, obviously QR giving the ball away um, and obviously Sabitzer could have won. Uh, Sabitzer, uh, what's it called? Chesney had to foul Sabitzer to win a pen. And so Arnautovic scores a penalty to make it 3 1, and it pretty much puts all the hopes down for Poland. And with this result, Poland was pretty much on the brink of elimination. And yeah, I'm just, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't really feel like it's a definitive pen. But regardless, even if the pen wasn't given, it ended, would have ended 2 1, and Pol Austria still would have won the game. So, you know, I don't think Poland would have equalized in the game. But you know, so for Austria, as I said, man, huge, huge win for them. And now it gives their hopes of qualification very much alive. Because if you actually look at the table right here, guys, they're actually on three points. And they put themselves in a great position to advance. Now moving to the final game, guys. Netherlands versus France. Guys, this game was a, a bit of a, under, a snooze fest. I thought the first half of this game was actually pretty good. I thought first half it was pretty good. But the second half was really underwhelming. second half was pretty underwhelming. Both teams had a lot of good chances. Obviously, Griezmann, that miss there. I don't know how Griezmann didn't score that chance. That was a huge, huge miss there. And uh, then, obviously, uh, Griezmann had another miss there. And then, obviously, uh, uh, Netherlands had a good chance there from Fr uh, Frank Bong. The first minute of the game, he should have scored that. And then Gakpo from distance. But the second half, man, second half was so... Uh, second half, sorry, it was Simmons. I got the distance one. Uh, and the Gakpo as well, sorry. On the second half, man, oh, it was just so poor. For France, were really creating so many chances. They had more shots and everything. And then obviously, we're talking about the disallowed goal. Now, for me, guys, I personally think for me, is it the right decision? See, a lot of people are saying that it was 
the a lot of people are saying that the goal didn't get st- st- the goal didn't stand because of the fact we had I think someone was on the block in the way I think it was Dumb Dumfries I was in the way, and for me, uh, you can maybe argue it's it's a bit of a hard one because you know it, it is a bit tricky, but at the end of the day, man, it, it's so hard to say say you know it was disallowed and everything, and yeah, I thought it was a it was a very controversial moment in the game, and a lot of people saying Dutch the Netherlands got robbed and everything. They potentially could have. But I think with this France team, you could clearly tell that this France team needs Mbappe. They need Mbappe and Giroud. And they need Pogba. I think Pogba is one of the players that France have really, not really replaced over the last couple of years. And I think he's a player that can offer you so much creativity, offer you so much spark in the midfield. I think Pogba is definitely missed. Obviously, we're never going to see Pogba again for France after what he's going through in personal life. We're not going to go into that stuff here in the video. But obviously... um, you, you need you need you need uh, you need Giroud because criticize Giroud all you want. The guy can play as a decoy. He can be that filler striker. Eight. He can just occupy those defenders. He can man mark, you know, and make it difficult. I, I've always criticized Giroud. I, I I've like the guys. Giroud has always been a guy that I've never really rated that highly. But you say what you will about Giroud. The guy is a good. The guy is clutch. Whenever France need a goal, he can always give you that goal. And Mbappe is needed this team. Obviously, Mbappe didn't play this game because he had that injury, of course, as we all know. And yet, for Didier Deschamps, the substitutions were pathetic. I mean, come on and Giroud in the 75th minute. Why are you breaking the subs so late? I thought for Netherlands, man, Netherlands were solid defensively. I thought Van Dijk had a fantastic game. I thought Konate was great. I thought Magnon was amazing. Made those big saves. For Bergen, I thought was great as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, for Netherlands, as I said, man, defensively, they were great. It's just that attack for Netherlands. I'm not convinced, Matt. The Netherlands attack is so, so weak. And it, it, it so, yeah, for Netherlands, man, very, very underwhelming, guys. The the, fir- the the attack is so underwhelming, guys. And, yeah, it's just, it's just a shame because I thought both defenses were great on the day, but it's just that attacks were pretty poor for both teams. And, yeah, now going into this, going to the final match today, Netherlands will play against Poland. Poland is pretty much limited. They have nothing to play for because even if Poland do win, it won't matter because head to head is a tiebreaker. So it's pretty much over for them. So now we can have a situation going to the final match day, how this group is going to unfold. Because let's be real, guys. I believe all three of these teams will qualify. It's just a matter of which position will they finish in. Like, let's be real. Netherlands should top this group. I think Netherlands should top this group because they have the easiest task. Whereas for... Or actually, no. Netherlands is first right now. Netherlands is first by the fact they've scored more goals. So France have to hope that Netherlands don't win. Because if France and Netherlands both win, then I think Netherlands... My top the group. It depends what the goal difference is, goal different margin is, because I would expect I would expect France to beat Poland by a bigger margin than Netherlands. I'm not sure if Netherlands beat Austria, guys. That's going to be a very interesting game. So I think all three of the teams will qualify. It's just a matter of which position they'll play, finish in. So, like I said, guys, for um, Netherlands, as I said, man, the attack is horrendous. For France, they need to start Mbappe. They need to start Giroud in the next game. And yeah, man. So for Netherlands, man, very very unfortunate for them, but you know it is what it is. So. Hope you guys did enjoy this quick little review. Uh, please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.